had I had metal in my stomach, I would flex it for the purpose of other people doing that to me. Here's, here's I'm what okay you do. with being objective. Shut up! Here's what you do. I'm okay. You're fucking, you have, a person has a thing. You don't fucking say, ooh, I want to fuck them. I know this that too. Bro, no, you literally go up to them, have a conversation, say, hey, how does your arm work? Can you show me the cool shit? You're not like, ooh, I guess I'm going to fuck them, and then find out what their arm no, was. No, no, no. You're, you're talking to them, you're like, damn, you have a bionic arm? You want to show me what that can do? <laughs> <laughs> what that arm do, though? Yo, all I'm saying is, is on my screen, on the right is Joseph and Colton, and then on the left is me and Miles, and I've never felt more unified in my entire I, life. I, co- Kyler, it's the same way for me. We are fucking same, same here. We are in this like it's t- we, this, this is, is unbelievable. This is <laughs> you want to fuck someone because they have an attractive trait, not a fucking robotic no, arm. We're not saying that you fuck them because they have a robotic arm. You fuck them because they're hot, and then afterwards you say, "Listen, this really hot bitch had a bionic arm. That's fucking cool." This is going to be the greatest segment ever. No, <laughs> this is got to be just a Twitter snippet. Like okay. This is- what if it's the ugliest woman in the fucking world no. but they have the only bionic arm? Bionic no. arm. No. This conversation the originated with Fennec Shand, who yeah, was out the, the electronic shit thing is hot as fuck. Fennec Shand. Then, yes. yes. That's where this originates from. It wasn't, oh, Frog Lady has a bionic arm now. Let's go fuck her. Like, no, that's not what this is. That's, that's so never lost. what this was. I was so lost. I'm going yeah, to make about... this like the cut the cut clip at the beginning of the episode, then it'll go into the uh, then oh. it'll go into the theme song, and then it'll be the rest of the episode. Yeah, yeah. No, we weren't, yeah. Yeah, we weren't saying welcome. because of the bionic arm. We're saying that's yeah, just another thing on top. <laughs> welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Penny Bloom Podcast. It is I, Colton Robertson, and this is The Mandalorian Rewatch. That is Star Wars The Mandalorian The Watchman. I am joined by Joseph George. Thanks for being here, bud. The poopy man always shows up. Never late. Never late. Never <laughs> late. Better late than never, but never late is better. They tell me time is money, so we'll spend it together. We also got Miles Buttress. Thanks for being here. Glad to be here. I'm glad you are here. And on the screen below me that I can see, and you cannot. KBZ Kyler Barnett. What's up, buddy? Nothing much. Ready to get to it. Let's get to it. So, this week we've got Season 2, Chapter 14, The Tragedy. And let me tell you. I did not know the episode title this week before it flashed on the screen in front of me, and it said, The Tragedy, and I went, fuck. Yep, (laughs) you can imagine my horror when I looked on the screen and saw that shit. I was like, oh, horrifying, horrifying. Says something's Uh, gonna happen. Don't know. Oh, and we had a couple tragedies. We had a couple tragedies, so we got a... Yeah, what's the main tragedy? What are they referring to? Well, right, they're I, mean, ref- I think they're referring to the you know Grogu getting taken, yeah, but you know the crest crazy. also Dude, died. Spoiler the crest alert. died. Dude. That was the part where I was the most sad. Was the Razor Crest? Man. Dude, when the Razor Crest blew up, I was. I, I just, did not feel like it got its glory. It did not get like it's the like. like oh, it didn't even get a second. Did, that's why. No, they did give it its glory in season two, episode four. That's why they did that. So it had that one last hurrah of being like the most badass ship in Star Wars. Dude, this ship has been through hell. Like, I don't know how long the frame, like, time frame is for this whole show, but like, this ship has gotten absolutely fucked on, like, from start to finish. So, season two, chapter 14, The Tragedy, written by Jon Favreau, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Are you guys ready for the scene by scene breakdown? Absolutely. 
Let's do it then. So we open on Din and Grogu pulling up on Tython, you know, and Grogu's sitting in his seat playing with a little metal ball he loves so much. And uh, Din takes the opportunity to say Grogu's name a couple times. After each time, you know, Grogu does the, uh, and, you know, Din, Din has a good laugh at that. He's like, oh my god, I can finally call him by his name. It's so cute. <laughs> and uh, Din tells the baby to uh, hand him the ball. And uh, when he hesitates, Din goes, uh, Grogu give me the ball and miles's uh theory comes to fruition last week he says maybe the reason grogu doesn't listen to him is because he doesn't know his name and right here he hands him the ball after he goes grogu give me the ball i love it uh so he hands it over and then holds the ball up a few feet in front of him and lets the baby know it's time to rumble you know you can have it it's yours take it and uh you know grogu force pulls the ball in and then erupts he goes thank ferrick and uh, I was I was wildly confused. I was <laughs> I was like, what 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 are you so pissed about? And he, you know, it scares Grogu a little bit. And Din is like, no 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 no, don't worry, buddy. It's not you. You're this you're, was so you're, cute. You're so cool. go just like full like reassuring dad. Like dude, know, he is like, just no, evolving so fast. Dude, yeah. I hope I'm as good of a father on the first try as this man. Like he is no just shit. fucking got it. I mean, he still puts him in like tight crawl spaces with live wires, <laughs> but like he's fifty. He's a grown ass man. He can do it. Practically, yeah. And I mean, he's a, he's a fucking Jedi. You know, he's so. a grown ass man, but he's a baby. <laughs> but uh, you know, he uh, he says it's uh, it's not him that you know. He's very proud of him. He did great, and uh, it's just that when the nice lady said you had training. And then he trails off, and he goes, you're very special, kid. Do you think he was, like, hoping this kid would never use the Force again, just so, like, he didn't have to give him back? Is that why he went dank Ferrick? I don't... I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I'm I think he lie. was hoping that Ahsoka would be able to do more to train him. Mm -hmm. Like, I think whenever he saw Baby steal, like, grab the, grab the little ball again, he's like, God, Ahsoka... Why couldn't you just train him to be a Jedi in like a week and then we can go on our mm -hmm. Mando and baby Jedi adventures for the rest of the time, for yeah, the rest of I think, you know, my life? <laughs> I think he's just got a lot. I think Ahsoka may have scared him a little bit talking about when she kind of briefly touched on Anakin. You know, I've seen what these mm -hmm. emotions can do to the best, you know, to the best of us and this and that. And like, I yeah. feel like that probably resonated really hard with Mando just because thinking about how like. You know, as a Jedi, you've got this creed, right? You've got to follow the, like, this is it. Like, you know, you, everybody knows, like, it's the love, the emotions. Like, you can't use those. Those can't be motivators for any decision making. Yeah. Like, you, you know, this and that. And I think Mando coming from the background he does, especially as, like, one of those strict ass Mandalorian, like, one of those, mm -hmm. uh, I, you've got the term the official Foundlings. yeah, being a foundling and, like, raised in that, like, you have a similar creed, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel that like one. anything pertaining like that way, like, you know, with what he knows about the Jedi and knowing like that training process, I'm sure he is scared just because he's like, man, this kid is so powerful and look at him. He's like the least intimidating person. And yet if he decided to on a whim, he could fucking wreck my shit. I don't like, know. True. I don't know. I, got, I, I feel got like really that's what it is. I got a different vibe from it. I thought it was more of like, like, damn, like, damn, man, that's, that's my son, you know, kind of like a. I don't know. Like a, like like, a fuck yeah sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, like a kid would be like, oh shit, like he's he's mad at me. But then you'd be like, no, 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 I'm just really proud of you. Like, I fucking ah. love you. Maybe that's, that's right. the case. Maybe that's the case. Uh, but, you know, Din turns back to the front of the ship and says that he's going to find the place Grogu belongs and that uh, they'll take care of him. And he says that if a Jedi shows up and they want him to, Grogu must go with them. And Grogu responds with a huff. And uh, Din says that he uh, he couldn't train him. Grogu was too powerful. I thought that was just a cool line coming from coming from him, because like that's the first time we've ever like heard him really acknowledge the breadth of this well, power, you know? Right, and I wonder, does Grogu have any idea just how fucking cool and like badass he is and can be? Like, do you think he knows? Do you think he's in touch with that at all, or do you think he's? I don't. Like, I think he. I think he just knows that every now and then he can do something at his favor right you know? i don't think he realizes like i feel like he probably doesn't understand how like i guess rare or like mm -hmm. uncommon it is especially nowadays like where jedi are like mostly in shadows yeah. like yeah they're not even that like they're not out here in bundles or anything like 
Absolutely not. And you know, Denny's like, you you want to learn more of that Jedi stuff, right? And Grogu's like, <laughs> like, man, I don't give a fuck about the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Just take me around the galaxy with you. And uh, the interaction ends when Din says, I agreed to take you back to your kind, so that's what I need to do. You understand, right? And, you know, the camera lingers on Grogu for a second, and it's just like a little bit of a, ah, it's totally not going to happen. Uh, you know, and when they make Planet Fall, Din explains he can't find, uh, or he can't land atop the, uh, quote, magic rock. So they'll have to uh, fly the last bit in the open. Uh, and we cut to them flying through the air via jetpack, and Din lands with Grogu in hand upon the magic rock. He approaches the seeing stone. He says, uh, does this look Jedi to you? <laughs> <laughs> this is looking about right. This, you get you get the right vibe from this place. It's so and, uh, funny. It's like Mando reminds me so much of like okay. So I I'm not speaking from experience, but like so I guess take this with a grain of salt. But like you know in movies when like you see a kid go over to it like if his parents are like their parents are divorced he'll go over to the dad's house for the weekend. Dad's mm-hmm. like showing him around this like raggedy apartment, and it's like spaghettios for dinner, and it's like you know, hey, does this look right? Like, is this it? Yeah. Like, you no, know, they're like trying their best, but like they really don't know shit about anything. Uh, hey, Man, bud, does, like, this, uh, does this look like? Does this look Jedi to you? Yeah, like, like that. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> my 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 getting it right. Uh, but you know, he places uh places Grogu down on the stone, and he's not very patient about it. He says, "Oh, okay, here we go." This is the seeing stone. Are you seeing anything? <laughs> and uh, Din makes his way around the stone to see if there's some sort of mechanism he needs to activate or something like that. And uh, meanwhile, a butterfly flutters in the face of Grogu and he tries to grab it. And it's adorable. But the and Din's like, all right, come on, kid. Come on. He says that uh, uh, Ahsoka said that all he would have to do is get him to the stone and that Grogu would do the rest. Yeah, I like how he's, like, so frustrated about this. Like, dude, like, he think he work. has any idea either? Like, he's never fucking been fucking here. Play, bro. You just like, had him on a fucking rock. You expect him to be like, all right, I'm going to reach out with the Force now. Like, <laughs> Bro, do you know what those butterflies were referring to? I've seen stuff on I Twitter. There's, well. like, these, it's like uh, these butterflies have, like, a connection to the Force. Yeah. And, like, Anakin was kind of going through a moment like Baby Yoda was, or Grogu, sorry. And there were butterflies, and they were kind of signifying the light side of the force. And mm. Anakin just, like, fucking killed them. Like, he killed oh, the butterflies, and then that's how he got, like, he was just in more rage. So, man. like, I don't know, that might might be, like... Only fucking Anakin would kill a goddamn butterfly. Well, like, yeah. dude, He's like, man, look yeah. at the butterfly. It'd be a shame know, if, you might know, be a I just killed like, the women and children. But he's not gonna be evil, you know? Yeah, you never know, but, uh, you know... Right here, overhead, we see the Slave One, Boba Fett's ship, flying overhead. And I just... <gasps> yep, audibly, yeah. like, definitely one of the... like the, uh, I don't even want to say few. I definitely audibly, like, <laughs> react to things as I'm watching it. But, yeah, like, God, that ship has so much nostalgia for me. Like, I don't know. I just love it's the look gorgeous. of it. It's so fucking badass. And, like, I just love it. I, I well, don't know now, what else to say. Like, as a young kid, as it, me growing up on the uh, prequels, like, mm-hmm. and seeing the new age, like, seeing, because, like, I don't know. I feel like that's one of the more unique spacecraft we get in those prequels. And like, Absolutely. I, I just think seeing that and then seeing it take off from Kamino and then like, you know, all the mm-hmm. shit that they use. Chasing for, uh, Obi-Wan. And, yes. I fucking, mm-hmm. I just love it. I think it's so fucking it cool. It's, and seeing it, it's like, oh. For sure. And what's great too is it's, it's filling the role now. It's. The, oh, it's the yeah. ship we're gonna be. It's the ship we're gonna be following, and for the rest of the the rest of the season. God, it is. I love that. I love it mm. too. I I really do. Like that's why I'm okay with the fact that the crest went boom boom because now we have, now we have the slave one. So. You think Boba will think that his debts aren't paid enough, and he gives Mando the ship? Ooh, that'd be cool. I don't feel that'd like that's fun. true because I'm sure Boba's gonna be like, "Look, man, we just went through." Well, that was his dad's hell. ship. He's pretty connected. Yeah, but well, I know. But I mean, like, just like, I don't know. No, I get you though. That very would be that point. would be one more cool thing to just very, be like, all right, now Mandalorian point. has the slave one from now on. Maybe they just go. That's they just him and Boba just work together for the rest of the series. Yeah, rest and of the series. And they're like a couple of dual they gunslingers. Just, yeah, they just go on space adventures for the rest of the series God, with I the wish that was baby the Grogu. I but, wish that was the case. They're like, let's just fly off into the sunset. Forget the kid. Let's just go. <laughs> they're, they're holding it. hands, flying. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> but oh. you know, uh, Din Din runs over to see where the uh, where the ship lands, and and as this is happening, Grogu places his hand softly on the seeing stone, and you're like, oh fuck, he's about to he's about to find it. And uh, Din turns back to Grogu, telling him it's time to dip. But uh, Grogu is in the middle of some sort of energy field created by the Force, and uh, uh, he's just deeply entranced, just Bro. vibing. Those it's hands, the it fucking looks like so cool. The ha- his Dude, hand, little, beautiful. Like his, he's focusing. You know, yo, like he the, was he was meditating. He was yeah, whole ass med- meditating. Oh, so he cool. looks powerful as fuck. Yeah, he, he looks like he's about to go full Thor, like Ragnarok mode. Mm. Like you know, when he just pops the fuck off, like that's what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, he Are goes you from the Hammers. He goes from <laughs> not having a clue what's going on to just going Super Saiyan. <laughs> Absolutely. He's and, you know, Din approaches him and he tries to he tries to grab him and the force throws him back and Din takes a few steps back and decides that instead he would uh just go and buy the kid some time. He's like, Alright, you you seem to have a handle on something. I'm gonna go uh... <laughs> Yeah, I am like oh, I don't know what I want him to do. I literally just put in this like in my notes I literally look. I have said that I'm nervous in my notes three times and it's like right like it takes us to this part of where we're at in the rewatch right any time they are alone in I, any scenario I, and there's nobody around you just know something's gonna come crashing down that's just the way it goes so what i was worried about was that grogu was gonna sit on this rock and that he was gonna have a bad flashback like he was gonna have like he was going to see, like, picture. yeah, that's what I had thought. Like, it was going to be, like, one of those things where it's happened in something. I've seen it in some, I don't remember. You think, like, maybe it was going to be, like, a Last Jedi Ray thing where she connects to the Force and, like, the ground around her, like, cracks and shit? Yeah, like, that I thought it dope. would be, like, fine at first, but then, like, Mando would be off, t- trailing off, doing things, and, like, Baby Yoda would be so caught up in it, he, like, couldn't stop it. And, like, he'd go too far, and, like, he'd see mm. some bad shit, and, like, it would fuck him up. Like, that's what I was afraid of. Man. I don't know if you guys about had ever felt about that, but I guess I'm that just was not, paranoid, that was not like, where I was. But... person, like, almost all the time, but, like, you know, hey, that's how it is. No, I dig that. I dig that theory quite a bit, or, or like, at the time theory. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh... Not knowing not what we know. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ding, he, uh makes his way down the mountainside and blaster bolts come at him and then, you know, enter Boba Fett. So one thing I was going to say, I felt like, I don't know, maybe you, maybe I'm just weird or maybe I just noticed, like, I don't even, maybe I'm just pulling at straws here, but did you guys feel like the scenery around Mando, like just looked super good? Like it was kind con- like to me, the word I use is like, it was super con- like contrasting like that, mm-hmm. like, like Beskar, that like shiny silver with the, like this, Nice, they, like I don't even want to say like lush because it's not that, but like just the scenery, it looked like super different. Like I feel like I hadn't seen anything in Mandalorian like that, and I love. Well, there's it probably a, a reason for that. I don't see how this setting could have possibly been done in the volume. That's true. There is so I much. I think this had to have been an on location shot. Yeah, I I dig that. That's probably true. Um, I wonder whenever where they we were did it. Walk- Whenever I watch this scene with my with some people that come over and watch it with us, they he said that um, he ended up having to watch it like the next day, and he was talking about it. I had already watched it and was watching it again with him, and he was talking about the fact that he had already he already knew some of the stuff that was happening because he had seen clips of like stormtroopers and stuff running around this terrain mm-hmm. that had leaked during filming. Um, got you. I did got yeah. So it is an on location. Yeah. So they went out on location because he was like, "Is this the the episode with with stormtroopers?" As soon as he saw the thing, and I was like, mm. "How do you know? What have you What mm-hmm. have you looked up?" He goes, "Oh no, I just no. saw like a, a month ago. I saw like clips of stormtroopers running up and down hills." <laughs> yep, that's that. Like, hmm. But uh, you know, Boba approaches and he says, "I've been tracking you, Mandalorian." And uh, he walks in front of Din, and Din asks if he's a Jedi or if he's after the child. And Boba removes his hood and tells him he's here for the armor. And Din tells him that he's going to have to peel it off his fucking corpse. Yeah, no. Fuck with, the... fuck with me, you know I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, Boba's like, bro, I don't give a fuck about your armor. I want my armor, okay? So, uh, and, you know, Din asks if he's a Mandalorian. To which Boba responds, I'm a simple man trying to make my way in the universe, just like my father before me. 
Just like so, Bo- Django says in Attack of the Clones. Yep, I was going to say that. He literally said almost verbatim those exact words. I loved it. I loved it. And like, what's funny is, I mean, like, Boba was right there and he heard him say that mm-hmm. in that oh, moment yeah. to Obi Wan Kenobi. But there's also the fact that, you know, he's literally a clone of that guy. To go off on a little tangent, I saw something on Twitter today that was interesting to me. Don't be mad. I did not send it in the group chat. I'm sorry. I'm already pissed. Okay, fuck. Anyway, it's it said that maybe uh, Darth Vader, slash, you know, Anakin, he hired um, Django, or wait, I Boba. get these confused every time. Yeah, Boba, because his voice reminded him of Rex. I'm sure that's like grasping at straws. Oh, but I saw that, that. Is oh, cute, bro, I thought that was like, that makes sense. Whoa. Like just bare minimum. Like I just thought like that was interesting. Oh, yeah. I their voices are probably that. the same, but I doubt that was the reasoning. No, I yeah, doubt. but like, but like you can you can watch yeah. it and think that. Who was oh, who yeah. was Anakin close closest to? Number one, probably maybe Ahsoka or Obi Wan. They're Ahsoka, number Obi Wan. Yeah. Oh, Padme. they're one A, one B. Number two is fucking Rex. Yes, but I don't think he's thinking of like. Well, to me, it wouldn't make sense because he'd want to more so distance himself from anything yeah. like pre like dark side shit. But like, mm-hmm. I still, I just thought that was like super like touching, and it was like, oh fuck. Yeah, maybe it's like his uh, subconscious kind of being yeah, like, yeah, I right, really, I want both Fett around, right. <laughs> To keep yes. track, to keep on track, like with what we're talking, like the actual episode and where we're at right now, I just love to hear like Boba talk about. Like, he just sounds so noble, I guess. Like I don't know, I feel like he gets he's got the really... perfect voice. He's got a perfect yeah. voice, and like he just no, but he literally is like not like trying to start any shit. He wants no trouble. Like, and what does Mando have to lose or like gain or gain from keeping this armor? Like it's just sitting there. Mm-hmm. What does he need it for? And like I feel like Mando's definitely gonna like. I don't know. He don't like. What's the smoke to be had there? Like there is none. Well, I think he's planning on returning the armor to the oh uh, to the whatever it's called. To, yeah, to the next Mandalorians he can find them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So also, oh, go ahead. He, sorry, you said his voice like was great. Mm-hmm. Every single time I heard like I'm just a simple man like trying to make my way through the universe, I kept getting uh like hints of uh the one rock dude from Thor Ragnarok. Korg. 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 I just kept because just of the like the, the accent. I want to make my way through the universe. Yeah, the accent. I was just like, God, yeah, why do I keep hearing Korg? It's not, but it's so close. <laughs> That's kind of fucking funny. Damn. But uh, you know, uh, Boba and Din argue for a moment about who the armor belongs to, and, da, 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 and Boba tells him that he swears allegiance to no one, and that the armor was given to his father Django by uh, you know, this Mandalorian's forebears. He's like, listen, bro. This this armor is rightfully mine. I don't know what I got to do to convince you. I'm just trying to tell you right now. I'm gonna let you know. I will I will kill you for it. I, <laughs> I will do that, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> and you know, uh, Boba lets Din know that if uh, anything happens to him, he has a sharpshooter, locked and ready to fire. And the sight is set on Grogu. Man. Yeah, that fucked me up. I bro, he like, got pissed. Bro, the the anxiety meter immediately was like exactly. fucking to the roof. And then you know you hear the voice, you hear Fennec, and she goes, "If you remember, I don't miss." And Din, fucking bewildered, Fennec, like what the yeah. fuck, dude? I was shocked. I was like, "What the hell?" Well, and this uh, this put my theory to bed <laughs> pretty quick. Yeah, but you well, know, my my theory was uh far far reaching. That's right. Dude, like immediately. So I, I just immediately was like, so I, I just don't know what to feel because like Boba seems like pretty peaceful about his like approach. Well, he's just about he's about that action though. He's like, yeah. I want to give you but every like, chance I can, but if you if then you, when you tell me that it's Fennec Shand and what she tried to do to Mando earlier, I'm like. What like I don't know what to feel. I'm like, should is this a good? What's thing? crazy? Is a bad is they're thing? like they're like mad honor bound. Which I did not see like, coming. You save my life, like you save my life. I'm gonna work for you the rest of my life. Yeah, sort of. yeah. That's... Like, it was a bond, bro. I wonder if she has like 300 years of ind- of indentured servitude, like that one, like the fish dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, and every time she does something, Bo is just like, "You get 10 years off." <laughs> but you know, yeah. 
Then he arms his whistling birds and threatens both of them one last time, and uh, Boba says there is no need for violence, that we should just have a chat. And uh, they're like, fine, you put the jet back down, I'll tell her to stand down, I'll put my gun down, and they all do it and stuff. And, you know, and Boba's like, let's have a chat. And Fennec tells Din that he looks like he's just seen a ghost. <laughs> Fennec Shand is hot as fuck. Hey, did that line. Dude, that's the most part of the line I've ever fucking heard. He doesn't have, you can't see his face, yeah. Like, or obviously you can't see his face, so how are you going to fucking know? And then also, he thought you were fucking dead. So obviously, he's going to be like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, and like, yeah, I mean, obviously he, he looked... I don't know. I was Right when I heard it, I was just pissed for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just got really mad. That was the only time I got mad in this episode. <laughs> Maybe sure. since like in Star Wars, like in the Star Wars universe, like a bunch of people wear like helmets and masks and shit. People are just able to tell other people's like emotions and like thoughts through their like the way their head moves. <laughs> they're like body language, yeah, like focus. That's why they're like, I can't see your face, but you look like you look like you just saw a ghost for no reason. <laughs> now, you look like I just fucked you up a little bit. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, Boba explains that she was left for dead on the sands of Tatooine, and just like himself. And he says, sometimes fate steps in to save the wretched. And Fennec says, in this case. Boba Fett was that fate, and she removes a patch over her stomach and reveals that she has just, she's just a robot on the inside, bro. Some Darth Maul ass shit. Like uh, more extensive than Darth Maul, I'd argue. Yeah. It is inside of yeah. her. Like it's not just her <laughs> legs. And why would she just show that off? Like it's nothing. Like that's kind of a invasive. I I don't know. It seemed inappropriate. I just want to say bro. that I don't feel like my comment from earlier was paid enough attention to. I think Fennec Shand is hot as fuck. She's an attractive woman. Yeah. She is hot as fuck. Silently and agree. the robot thing, I'm going to be honest, has not done much to deter me. I, I, if anything, <laughs> I'm more about it. See, and – not quite on that line, but I was gonna say, like you said, like, <laughs> not, it seemed like not, it seemed like she was just like just showing it off. Way out of line. Way <laughs> no, no, completely, <laughs> perfectly. Like, completely. no, like I'm I'm 100 percent with you here, but <laughs> yeah, but on a different, oh, a similar idea. line. <laughs> that was a um, good idea. If if you had robot surgery and your abdomen was a a fucking machine, you're not telling me that if someone said like I thought you died, you wouldn't be like, no, I'm cool and yeah, show it to them. Like I would flex the. Fuck I'm a fucking out robot. You. Fuck you, bitch. No <laughs> fucking way, bro. I'd be so insecure about that shit. Nah, I'd be like, I'm I'm never like no. anyone see my insides. Like, <laughs> well, who does that? Do you anyway, your insides are metal, dude. Joseph, <laughs> you literally have like, you're unique as fuck. Everyone's yeah. gonna think that's attractive, no matter if it's metal. They're gonna be like, yo, he's part metal. Like, that's kind of fucking. I'm kind of with like, the Joe here. That. I'm not gonna oh, lie. God, see, crazy, bro. See, I'm not bro, going, I'm not I'm going stuck. the it's kind of hot line. I'm going with the more like, it's cool just being like, dude, I, I would look go. at my fucking stomach. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's cool, but I'm saying like, people are gonna she's think at like that a, that's She's so at like a party and she's like, downing going. drinks and she opens it up and it just starts like pouring, the party pouring trick. out. <laughs> bro, why is that <laughs> hot in any way? Yeah. But, you know, here, we'll move on. Boba explains that uh, his father was given the Mandalorian armor by Din's forebears, and in exchange for the armor, he guarantees the safety of the child and Din himself. This is very important later. Because, like, later in the episode when they say, like, no, nah, we had a deal, I was like, when the fuck did they make that deal? <laughs> I completely forgot this line. But, uh, you know, Boba and Finnick break down now that the uh, price of uh, on the child's head has increased significantly and they just want the armor. seems like the price they're willing to pay is worth worth it, you know? And uh, then overhead, an Imperial dropship enters the uh, atmosphere and lands next to the Razor Crest. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I was freaked the fuck out. Well, Again, uh, just another part of my notes that said, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, anxiety to the max, who's on this motherfucking ship? Mm -hmm. Those were my notes. Yeah, and you know, Verbatim. didn't bolt for the top of the hill on the... Uh, he reaches Grogu and he's like, yo, it is time to go. But Grogu is still, you know, all entranced in his meditation. And, uh, you know, again, Din being a dumbass reaches and tries to grab him and yo, is thrown, thrown the fuck back, knocked the fuck out. Just... Is this the first or second time he's tried it? Where second. are we at? Second. Yeah. second. Why the what? fuck did you try it again and try harder? Hold on. What is the it's logic? Insane. This is actually insane. The first time he tries to go grab Boom, instantly gets sent back. Right? This time, he makes it further. 
what what barrier can you enter that is a force barrier? Like, I don't know. I feel like this is like a force sensitive moment. Something, something. I feel like this is way more important than people are making it out to be. I think it's a dad moment. I think it's a dad strength. I think it's him just like pushing harder against it. I like, think this is putting... the equivalent of him putting on suiting up in the fucking Nike Air Monarchs and going and mowing the fuck out of a lawn. Bro, <laughs> like before we were just like kind of casual, like he had just put on the wife beater maybe, but now it's like Air Monarch. Like he's putting this bitch in that like See? fucking like he's going for it. Bro, I was gonna I, say no. I think I, this is a force sensitive moment because it would explain so beautifully how he's such a badass Mandalorian. He's not for that'd be cool. Joseph. That'd be cool. I feel like it'd be cool, was, but he's not. I feel like if that know. were the case, though, I feel like we would have gotten something like instead of just the barrier. Like the I feel like it would have been like he might have accidentally actually touched the stone, and that might have like just a yeah. little something. Like I'm not saying it would have triggered a baby Yoda like fucking blue force field shit. I'm talking about maybe just like a little spark or something. Like if he accidentally touched the stone when he sat baby down, if I feel I'm like right, that's where it would have been. If I'm right, ten dollars. From the non-believers. I'm down. I'll, I'll take that bet. Um, <laughs> but what I was going to say is I feel like this is kind of like the – because, Kyler, you said, like, it didn't work the first time. Why do you keep trying? It's the whole, like, whenever you try and pick something heavy up, and the first time you're not really trying that hard because you don't think it's that okay, heavy. Okay, that's fair. And then you're like, okay. you're like, all right, you take a step back, get a quick <laughs> breather in, and then you like <sighs> – and then you go and try and pick it up and obviously fail again because it's still way too heavy. But you go yeah, for it. Bro, that's second try. You like, keep trying because you accept. You're like mentally. You're like, like I'm that, not letting this. You have just totally unlocked every ma- every male that's listening to this can relate to this moment. I refuse yeah. to believe they can't. It's yeah. bro. Like I do this it's all the time. It's a personal time. challenge. There. You know, it's the it's, like, it's the taking right, every right, single bag okay. of groceries in one trip. You like, you're not gonna let it be you. You're not gonna lose. You size you have the fuck out of that shit. You size it up like a. I do that shit all the time with the fuck. I I couldn't get my lid off my blender bottle the other day, and I literally probably I almost blacked out trying to. Get <laughs> shot, I did not give up, and I still got it off. Well, you know that would have been kind of wild if the blender bottle had knocked you the fuck out the way. Oh my god, it. that would have been fucking embarrassing. <laughs> nah, not more embarrassing than that. Undefeated, fight, I was undefeated, never lost, and then never. that would happen. Quite the blemish. But uh, here, Fennec and Boba post up with their uh, rifles ready to take out the imps, and uh, a battalion of troopers emerges and is picked off one by one, and uh, a handful makes it out. Uh, but so Boba, Boba and Fennec were mowing them down. The crazy thing to me was as soon as they got off the ship, and I'm, I'm just strictly talking about when they came off the ship, they seemed to be, like, the, the movements, and, like, they actually seemed, like, for a split, just super small second here. Seemed like they maybe like they were on some different shit. Like they were moving different. Like they actually had their shit together a little bit, which like we found out. No, nah, not really. Not until like no, know, they but, continue to be extraordinarily yeah. I, dumbass. This is this incapable, so, utterly. Two things. One, uh, pretty much everyone that I've watched this with so far, we've all came to the same conclusion. Whenever Den left, like their meeting place, why the fuck didn't he pick up the, ba- the jetpack? Of course. Of why course. didn't he? Why did he just leave it there? That would have solved oh, every single issue in this episode. It would have solved every problem. Yeah, yeah. but you know. Um, also, second man, though, I didn't even think about um, that. Second though, that like with the storm, or the, yeah, the stormtroopers that we were talking about. This made me really feel bad for the stormtroopers because, like, it showed, like, yes, they're awful soldiers, but it all stems from their leadership. <laughs> Oh yeah, where, I, where they were like, like, like this. it's quality control. Yeah, Creed like, Bratton is fucking him up in there, man. Yeah, he was like, fucking he him was up. like, he was like, well, there's too much fire, sir. We can't flank him. He goes, uh, uh, flank Go, him, and then he just gets gunned. He stands up, gets got, <laughs> you know, and then he, and then the guy just like looks around, and is like, uh, flank still. <laughs> why does this no one learn? Why does no one learn from D Day? You never open your fucking only hope for survival right in front of all the guns. You would go behind the ship and then run out while they're unexpecting you, you know, to yeah, run out. I, I, this is probably a simple war tactic of 101. I don't know why no one ever fucking does it. It's, it's like they're <laughs> Yo, can we out talk, to get shot. Is this potentially some of the most gruesome ways we've seen a stormtrooper, like, fucking die? Because this shit oh, Boba, Boba was here? using was fucking wild. Yo, oh, this man was I'm swinging that shit it. like Rafiki, bro. He was swinging that shit like he, Rafiki in there. He was swinging that with pure hatred in his heart, and I loved it. <laughs> Just brutally murdering stormtroopers. Yeah. Like anytime you see a stormtrooper like get hit and you see their their helmet shatter, shatter, yeah, it makes me happy. <laughs> mm, it's it's amazing. But uh, 
you know, the troopers continue to push Fennec, who has the high ground, and uh, naturally the Ems pull out the uh, heavy repeating blaster, because you have to, and uh, <laughs> one of the Ems blows up a bomb in front of Fennec, which loosens up a boulder, which, you know, Fennec Immediately, boulders. my thought is, oh shit, Fennec's, like, in trouble. Which is funny, because what actually ends up happening with this rock <laughs> is quite the fucking content. It is, oh shit, stormtroopers are in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Not what I had expected. Yeah, and you know, she goes one, two, three, and she pushes this boulder down the hill, and it takes uh takes out more than a few of the. Dude, why wouldn't you process. fucking move? Why do they like try to run? They run away straight from down. It? Why do they not run sideways? Listen, Joseph is just, it. Joseph it's, is pissed at this point. It's because, like the stupidity in this episode. Every just, fucking it's, movie, bro. It's it's the it's movies. If there's a building gonna fall down. What do they do? They try to outrun the fucking building. No way you're gonna fucking outrun a building. Hey, no, I don't know. Way. I'm I'm like Usain Bolt though. What is faster, a human or gravity? Mm, I don't know. Human. <laughs> <laughs> the anger in this episode from Joseph is just it's top ten, and I it's fucking palpable. Love it. it is palpable, <laughs> but uh, you know, Boba he uh, he comes back in and finishes off a few troopers, and, and then he spots the Razor Crest with an open hatch, and he's like, "It's time." I gotta get and, my shit. Dude, more, can we talk about Boba tapping on the fucking Stormtrooper's shoulder before he fucking ended this man? It's like, dude, I don't know this guy. He could have had a family. Like, that might just be, like, Rick in there with three kids at home. Like, why you gotta do him like that? This man... He's like, sup, bitch? Nah. He was having fun uh, with it, and I enjoyed oh, it. Oh, yeah. And he's, like, grizzled and old-looking as fuck, and it's like he is still out here just swinging this goddamn thing. I still love my Rafiki reference. I still think that's the most... It was, like, it was strong. It was strong. It was. Cue the noise. But, uh, you know, more M's push Fennec, and she goes just absolute god mode with the sniper and picks off a few of these hoes, and then another ship drops. You know, another drop ship. It comes in. It's like, yo, there's more of us. We're just, we're just fucking with you, really. We're just gonna keep sending more and more of these ships the more you fuck us up. And, uh... <laughs> Din finally wakes up from his sleep and tries to grab Grogu again, again, for the third time. And when it doesn't work, he says, fuck it, I'll just, I'll go down here and I'll protect you. All right, uh, good I luck. I told you, whenever you wake up, you're kind of, yeah. Like, he just woke up and what did he do? He did the one thing that has knocked him out. Let me try one more. No, that you know what? It was the it's similar to what I said earlier. It was, let me try one more time. See if I loosened it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But, uh, you know, naturally, right here, Grogu, uh, wait, uh, you know, he comes yeah. out of his trance at the absolute worst time. <laughs> Another, real quick, I just have to get this in here. No thing that I said while, time. Yeah, while watching this, while watching the episode and that happened. Clearly, you can see the giant fucking beacon of light raising from the ground. Why does Din, he turns away to be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go protect you and runs away. How does he not see the beacon just turn off behind him? And he's like, oh, okay, he's done. Let me go run up and get him. I usually can't see things behind me, though. But that's the type of thing that I – it's fair. It is behind him. But I feel like you would notice the beam Miles, of light. Like, you want to know Miles, behind me. You know why? Why? Because spaceships don't come equipped with rearview mirrors. They dip as quick as they can. The I knew you'd get this. now ripped. <laughs> That was just a little alley oop to my boy Cole. For a second, I, I don't know if that, either of you understood that, but I had to throw that out there. So, so it's just a great verse. Cue the noise. Oh, but uh, God damn it, that's when that's like my proudest moment right there. Honestly, that was that was probably the best pop culture reference we've had so far. <laughs> but uh, you know, then gets to the uh, gets to Fennec and he starts fighting alongside her and. They're getting pinned down by some troopers, and Din tells her that she can go, that he owes her for the last time they ran into each other, and she tells him that they have a deal. And that's not happening. So uh, Din's just taking bolts right off the armor, just keep shooting at me. I don't give a fuck. Covering Fennec, and, and as they continue to close in, it doesn't look good. But then, again, enter Boba Fett. The armor. And this time, yeah, this time it's really Boba Fett. Why did it seem like, to me, it just like, I... I, I just forgot. I guess I'd forgotten. I don't even want to say forgotten. It just was so, like, out of my mind that someone else had been in this armor, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it didn't feel – like, once it was revealed that it was, um, you know – Cobb Vanth. Annie Cordray. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, I was like, nah, nah, nah. but then yeah. like seeing it and knowing it was Boba, it was like, oh. yo, and it was so clearly him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it, you could just he... like, I don't know. There was just a feel about it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know how to explain it. There's just like this feeling, just the movements and the way he was like carrying himself in it. It just seems so much more natural, and like yep. he was really like, it, oh god damn. See, yeah, I was gonna he, say, no, go no disrespect to uh, Din, but complete disrespect to Din. Boba's just so much better, so much better. Bro. Like Din is just like standing there, just being like pew 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 pew, while backing up and getting shot at. Whereas Boba just like flies in and just like starts just beating the shit out of people and shooting them with with like guns on his fucking kneecaps. I He's will say that that is something I've noticed. Gun. I don't feel like Mando has been as resourceful with his armor no. lately in this season. Other than using the whistling birds in, uh, I guess he used the flamethrower, but I mean, that wasn't even that effective when he used it on, what, the spiders? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside then, of, he's, he's used his armor better for, like, just letting people shoot at him. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's that's like all right, I'm just going to tank like, it. Because he didn't do that a lot in the first season, I feel like, where he was just like, I'm just going to tank, tank some fucking bullets and take one for the team while everyone else fights for me. I feel like he didn't do that a lot in the first season, and he's done it a lot this season, though. Bro, you're not mm-hmm. telling me that was the coolest shit? Just tanking bullets like they're that nothing? That was cool. Not cool oh, as shit, though, cool. because Boba Fett flew in immediately afterwards and was about ten times cooler. Well, yeah. yeah, you know, and... He, <laughs> it's a bad day for ten. Just takes out every trooper in sight like an absolute fucking beast. He uses his knee gun and forces a retreat from the stormtroopers. Like, one There's, guy. Oh. He came in and he was like, yeah, psych bitches. And then, uh, you know, all these all these troop, troopers, they, they launch into the atmosphere and... But not before Boba decides to, you know, take them out. Yeah. So and what then, I was like, good say, shot, and he's like, I was angry. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I know that right. would that made me laugh that was funny. so hard. No, he was. What I was gonna say yeah. was, and I don't know if any of you guys noticed this or probably drew this parallel because I feel like I'm pretty alone, and I feel like I just <laughs> randomly misremember shit that makes it seem like it's like one and one, but it's not. But anyway, wow. Um, I fucking loved the score. For Boba, when Boba was fucking all these dudes up, the score was so good. And what I noticed is, to me, it almost sounded like... Do you guys recall from Black Panther? Which, I know, Colton, you've talked about this before, I think, in even season one, that this is the same guy. So it shouldn't be a surprise. But... Ludwig Goranson. Yes, when... I felt like when T'Challa would be in action, that score was kind of like lighter. It's more like mm-hmm. airy, I guess. That's the word I'm going to describe. I, I don't even I get, know. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But Killmonger came on, and it's immediately more bass. It's a lot it harder. The, it's darker it sounding. It had the Hans Zimmer, like, bah, feel to it's it. Oba, yeah. Oba and so Boba doing this reminded me so much of that. Like, his score was so much more thumpier and, like, harder hitting. And just, I, I, I hate to say dark because he's really not being a dark character, but, like, it just is. I well, don't know how he's else doing to, to these it. men is well, pretty dark. Well, yeah, but when Mando does it, it's still, like, kind of, like, lighter. You know what I mean? Like, it, I it, it's music like is a, just a pure twist. murder. Yeah, they're twisting it, like, off of Mando's, like, lighter version and then giving it more thump, more dark. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I fucking love that shit. I love that parallel. And I hope I'm not mistaken by saying it. But like, No, I get I get exactly what you're saying. So, like, right here, you know, they're, they're all standing there and, you know, and then all of a sudden, a blaster bolt rains from the sky from above the clouds. And you're like, oh, shit, what's that going to do? And then... Boom goes the Razor Crest. Bye bye, your favorite ship. Uh, it just happened so abruptly. Yeah, it was it, immediate. It, it, it's just like out of nowhere. No, just, I mean, and that gone. It was the first moment in this show that was straight up like jaw drop. What? Mm-hmm. They definitely like, should have made it like SNL, like the mm, what you said. <laughs> just like that should have been what it was like. Excuse the noise. The but, Boba Fett's um, getting shot too. Like, what, <laughs> just, it just keeps going back dude, and no, forth. I really okay to backtrack this for a second. I want to see Mando use the little jetpack rocket thingy. I want to see it happen. I don't so think he bad. has one. That makes me yeah. so mad. I feel like in the future, why would you have all those bells and whistles and not have that? That's so fucking crazy. I, I, I thought know, he like, did have a rocket at one point. I feel like I, I remember it, him shooting well, a rocket at something. That was Cobb no, Band. Yes, yeah, it was. Oh, and that's, you're right. But Bro, why, like, why would Boba you Fett has that? the knee missile thing. He has a shotgun. It's like it's like you're equipped with different things. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, but I, I feel like Boba Fett got all the cool stuff. The only cool thing that 
that Mando has is the fucking little like whistling things. Well, you got to remember they did like make that a moment in season one. They yeah. were like, and I'll, I'll make the rest whistling birds. And he was like, like oh, shit, cool. I get whistling birds. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mando's I part guess- of the creed where the armor is making them things, but Boba could get his shit made wherever he wanted. Like he could have additions wherever he wanted. Well, no, not really, because most of the stuff is made, probably made using Beskar, and like Mandalorians are like the only ones that can the do Imperial stuff with Beskar. Had, no, I, I believe it's... The Imperials had Beskar, but they had melted it all down using the Mandalorians' forges, I think. I, I don't know. I think it's just a, a metaphor for what their religion is. And like if they take the the pride in the craftsmanship, but I think anyone could do it. I think anyone could just form Beskar. Yeah, you're probably sense. right. But you know, Finnick tells Boba to get to his ship, and uh, Din realizes that Grogu is probably in danger. And we cut up to the uh, Imperial light cruiser in the sky. And Moff Gideon dispatches his dark troopers. Oh, and they fly on down to the Seeing Stone. And you're like, ah, fuck. So I'm not like stupid or anything we did see like moff gideon was actually on the screen he taught like you see they take you in the cockpit right when this happened Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay i was gonna say i just wanted to make sure i felt like i had maybe misremembered somehow or something but i love i I don't know i hate it but i love that we're still just getting these little bits and pieces of moff gideon like it's really building this like he's really this he's this palpatine-esque figure yeah i think yeah Building this, like, hey, this dude is really that dude. Like, he is fucking scary. Like, don't underestimate him. He's the real fucking deal. Like, I think you know it's kind I mean? of, I think it's kind of like how Faggy kind of like teased Thanos over and over and over, like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, but I think, yeah. I think Cute the Mandalorian also. Thanos is Thrawn. I think mm. like Moth Gideon is kind of like the pre-Thanos, but I think Thrawn is the Thanos of. Of, yeah, uh, Moff Gideon's Gide- 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 like out here, and he's... way more hateable. And by yeah. hateable, I mean lovable. Because we're I mean, going, we're going more Ultron territory with uh, Moff Gideon. Because I, I believe hasn't Feige like kind of helped with the Mandalorian? Uh, he's been he's been uh, loosely in yeah. discussion with Lucasfilm throughout I, his tenure. So I feel like that's just probably like just like a hey, I have experience, you know, guiding people through a vast fucking universe, universe super yeah. connected. Hey, here's how you do it. Yeah, I think they've gotten some tips with him and I think that's how they're building Thrawn. That's probably fair. That's probably fair. But you know, here the uh, the race to this child is mad intense. The uh, dark troopers closing in, Fennec and Din closing in, but you know, the dark troopers they look so badass. Pimp. They Pimp look as cool fuck. as fuck. And you the know, thing is, they almost – did anybody else feel like the way that they moved almost reminded you a little bit of like the hammer droids from Iron Man 2? Yes. yes. That's, I got an I, Iron Man like, vibe. Exactly, exactly, exactly like what that. I thought of. Cue the noise. Yes. But, you know, uh, Boba – or no, my bad. Uh, you know, the dark troopers, they, they grab they grab Grogu, and that's that's wraps. Tim looks, looks up in his thermal scope and it's like, oh, fuck. Dude, Grogu, when he's like holding his arms out and he's like his face. Oh, God. That should be looking down. There was a audible scream. Fuck. I don't know if you heard it, but there was a scream. It was very faint. <laughs> yes. It yeah. was so sad, bro. Whenever they flew up, seeing his little ears flap in the wind, that was adorable. Mm, yeah, it was. It was objectively <laughs> adorable. But, uh, you know, Boba, Boba trails behind the uh, flying dark troopers and gets a lock on to take them out. And Din informs him that he can't do that because it'll hurt the baby and to let them go. But Boba says he'll do a loose follow, see where they're going. And uh, an Imperial light cruiser comes into view, and uh, Boba in a gasp goes, they're back. I think and, he'd be a lot more scared than he seems in this. Well, Boba's like, that dude, though. Well, I don't know. Dude, he's been around the block. I don't that, know. That's he, he, he worked with yeah, he Dark did, Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. He worked with that. And like... Yeah. Pretty amicably too. Like he never really pissed Vader off. So like, like, and, and Vader was never really like, mad at him. No yeah, one, he no. really never had much to fear of the Empire. Like if anything, he was probably like felt safer than most like neutral ish people because like mm-hmm. he had because done he it himself part. was terrifying. Well, and what's cool <laughs> yeah. here too is that like the connotation of the scene is that like Boba really was just a dude trying to make his way in the universe. He didn't give a fuck. About right. anything the Empire had to do do with anything, he was just like, "I'm gonna get my buck and I'm gonna move on." Yeah, really happy that our like earlier theories that he was that he would end up working for uh, Moff Gideon ended up being false. 
Oh, me uh, too. So me too. Big time. That's I, a more welcome turn. At, like, at the know. beginning, I was okay with it. Now that he's actually been reintroduced, I would I would hate it because I love oh, absolutely. I love I love good boba. It's, yes. it's art great. It's so satisfying. It really is. Like it just makes mm-hmm. all of those talks become, about being. He becomes a cult hero instead of the cult villain. You know, yeah. like right. he's, he's going to be aiding our favorite character in the universe right now. Well, yeah, cool, it means. Cool. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, it means I can watch Boba Fett and cheer him on every single time I see him. Yeah. And not exactly. be like, do some cool shit, but fail your overall mission. Oh, I, mean, I can be like, do some cool shit and be successful. Oh, God. I'm so scared that he's going to turn on Mando now. Now you freak I don't think he would. So he's bad. a man of so his or like, he's, he's a man of honor, bro. I think yeah, he's got fair. it. But, uh, you know, Fennec's like, that can't be. And he's like, the Empire, they're back. And Fennec says that uh, the Outer Rim is under the jurisdiction of the New Republic, so what the fuck? And Boba I like how she just keeps arguing with him. Like, bro, yeah, and Boba's like, just yo, there. You don't think he's like, fucking soft. yo, this is not a spice dream. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know. And, she uh, kind of says some dumb shit, man. I don't know why that people <laughs> say some stupid shit. Why is Mando so calm right now in this part of the episode? Yeah, it... He is so, like, relaxed. Like, no, not... I think he's so and his chip got blown yeah, up. Yeah, he's he stressed as fuck, obviously, but, like, he is showing, like, no... He's not even hardly, like, showing any urgency. Like, he's not even, like, trying to be, like... I, I don't know. He's not even I frantic. Think, bro, like, I he's think he's just accepted. Because of what just happened. Like, he's like, I... holy fuck, my child is gone, and yeah. everything I own is also gone. I yeah, think he I think legitimately he's just... just lost everything. I think he's just accepted the fact that like baby's gone right now, and he'll like he's working to get him back. But I think he's he's realized like it's there's gonna nothing take I can plan. There's, there's nothing I can do about it. Right now. Like right this yeah. moment, like I need to take mm-hmm. some time to like yeah. get my shit right. So they're we, in yeah okay. Uh, they're in a fucking I, I, cruiser, and as I was gonna say earlier, that that the bullet like the or like the laser from the cruiser that blew up the. The Razor Crest really like reminded like yeah no these are th- these are still much bigger <laughs> yeah, like yeah, they will no, fuck right. these ships up and I think that like he just immediately realized, he's like there's nothing we can do right now they Absolutely. outgun us by a thousand <laughs> and uh, back on the ground Din sorting through the wreckage of uh, his destroyed ship and all his possessions and he could save two things the ball that Grogu loves and the uh, the ball was the made of Beskar. Possibly. Dude, the dude, when he dug the little knob out, yeah, and, like, and he held oh, it in his hand for a second, and he God. grabbed it real tight, he was just like, "I think, I think this solidifies a Moth Gideon versus Mando fight with the spear versus yes. the dark yes. saber. I think it solidifies it a hundred percent." Oh, dude, I don't know why I didn't fucking I was, think of that. Of course, that's what that's we, a, of course that's why he got that spear. 100%. Yeah, you guys were talking about like different fights that could happen, and you guys didn't mention it, and I was just like. It's Definitely. gonna be Moff Gideon Definitely. in the spear, and I oh didn't say it in the ch- in in our group chat because I specifically wanted to like either have someone else or me bring it up during this and You're to see if to see right. if Colton had thought about it. I don't know. Yes, I don't know. It just never like I'm with Colton. Yeah. It just kind of never. I guess I never put two and two together. But I don't think they would show us that the lightsaber wouldn't fucking slice through it. I don't think they would show us that without. Like yeah, no, they have... that first, and then Mando showing like having it now. That to mm-hmm. me, is solidif- like like you said, that just solidifies it. Knowing that a saber can't fuck it up. Well, I, this is another thing because if this fight is happening, most likely Mando will win. Hopefully, I mean, I think that's the direction they're going in. But whoever defeats the person with the dark saber, they become the new user of the dark saber. But you I, can you can hand it off because that's kind of like what happened will. with uh. I think no. Bo-Katan will be like, this dude's our fucking leader. No, no, uh, no, because Bo-Katan, if, even if he defeats him, I think, I think Den is going to hand it off to her. I think it'd be Yeah, I don't know if Mando won. I don't feel no, like... No, because that's what... I feel like it would be a very Harry Potter, Elder Wand type shit. Like, I don't yeah. fucking want it. Joseph, like that's what happened in Rebels, mm-hmm. is, uh, what's... Colton's doing something, and I can't ask him what the, what's, what's the character's name in Rebels? The girl that's the Mandalorian. Oh. Do either of you guys know? Hang on. The only two I know of are um, Dan and oh, what's the Sabine? name, man? Yeah, Sabine, Sabine Wren. Wren. Sabine Wren gets the dark saber, trains with it for a bit, and is like, "Yeah, I'm not worthy of this," and hands it off to Bo-Katan. Why wouldn't Mando be worthy of it? He thinks he's the best Mandalorian there is right now because he story. doesn't. He's not going to be like, the not, ruler of Mandalore, Joseph. Yeah, you have it's to not just I'm not worthy of it. It's no, like, he doesn't want it. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to be the ruler. 
is Moth Gideon the leader of Mandalore right no. now? No, no, technically. So I think the the dark saber has lost its meaning. Yeah, I think but no, the, not with Mandalore. No, I, it's the it's the dark saber in the hand of a Mandalorian. Yeah, I think I don't think Mando would be able to like. I think he's trying to distance himself a little bit from like his like strict like following of like creed and like foundling shit. But like, I don't think he could ignore that. Like, I feel like that's heresy of the highest order. Being like, oh, I have the dark saber, but I'm not gonna go to Mandalore. Fuck that shit. I'll just. Yeah. Be, like, um, I did. I did just have an idea though. Joseph, in, I'm sorry. In the don't lines. be discouraged. I didn't mean to like attack you. And I, I, I no, I just still believe that I'm right. right. But it's yeah. oh. Um, oh, well, in the lines of the of the like the f- duel between like the the spear and the dark saber, I just came up with this with the perfect idea of like um whatever Jedi it is, hopefully being Samuel L. Jackson comes back with one arm, can't like fully fight anymore because he's because he's at this point like a cripple and an old man. So he helps out he helps out Den and is like two on one. One of them has the the spear, the other one has a purple lightsaber. God, that could be wonderful. It that, would be so cool watching them fight together against Moff Gideon. Is if Mace Windu has a bionic arm, is he now smashable? Oh, I, I mean, he was smashable once again. Smashable before. Now, if you smash him, you say, you say, he was hot. Also, he had a bionic arm. <laughs> Joseph, there it is. See, look, now it has come full circle. <laughs> if baby, if Mandalorian doesn't take his helmet off in front of Baby Yoda before the end of the show, I'm burning down Disney. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. That's a threat. Uh, he. Fl- <laughs> Uh, Boba flies right past the, uh, oh wait, where we talked about the Beskar spear, right? Yeah. yeah. I like to imagine that Miles, by saying that, and the FBI agents has immediately been put on a watch list just Good. for that, just because Good. of how important Disney is. Good. Well, hey, I say probably. important, but I mean like just how huge they are, I guess I mean. I'll do it. <laughs> Boba and Fennec watch uh, Din sort through the wreckage and as Din approaches he explains it was all that survived and Boba shows Din his chain code and that it's been encoded in this armor for 25 years and that uh, his father Jango Fett was a foundling like Din which I loved mm. I loved mm. that detail That's uh, that just seals that whole that whole mess up it's just, he's not committing heresy this is just a, it's just a dude who's wearing armor okay and uh, I like that. I, I like that because it would have been annoying otherwise. And uh, Din accepts this and says the armor belongs to him and, ex- and uh, expects them to go on their way. And uh, Boba explains that their deal was not kept. Boba and Fennec are uh, indebted to the Mandalorian until the safe return of Grogu to his side. And I was like, fuck. Man yes. of your word, man. Okay. Fucking... Damn. And we're like, all right, let's fucking go. The ne- next, you know, the Slave One makes Planet Fall on Navarro. And uh, Din needs to stop in for a visit with New Republic Marshal Cara Dune. So after the last time we saw her, she has gone legit. That conversation got to her a little bit. She was like, all right, if we're going to take down the Empire or stop them from ever coming to fruition, maybe this is something I have to do. And I thought that was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, Din's like, I heard you've gone legit. And she's like, well, cool it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm not not some asshole that works for the man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not a fed. I'm just a cop. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he asked her to uh, look up a, a New Republic prisoner by the name of Mayfeld, and I was like, "Excuse Dude, me, what?" Bill <laughs> Burr being back in the fold makes me happy as fuck. I oh, I'm here for Burr, it. bro. I am here Burr, for it, but like, I never expected to see like oh no, absolutely him again. I thought it was just gonna be like a hey, John Favreau knows Bill Burr, they're friends. Like, let's just toss him in an episode one time for the. I one think it was time. more like Bill Burr he thought it was me. fucking awesome, and he's like. I gotta do that again. Yeah, no, he, he told me to like, on hey, the show. Put me back. Let me, in, let me, let me back yeah. on. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Make you know, an important ass character. And uh, Din explains that he needs Mayfeld to uh, spring him, or he needs Mayfeld to uh, spring Grogu, find Moff Gideon's light cruiser and stuff. And Carr explained that she's with him. She's with him, but you know, she's a part of the New Republic now. I've got rules. And uh, Din says they have the kid. Let's Cara, fucking go. Cara just, Cara just like looks right at him, raises an eyebrow, and is like, "All right, fuck it." I'm <laughs> with you. The New Republic. I, I'm in. Who and, has uh, the kid? I'll end them. <laughs> exactly. And uh, in hyperspace, Moff Gideon makes his way to the uh, cell where they are keeping Grogu, and uh, 
when he arrives, he sees that the baby is just tossing around a couple of troopers, just really bitching them, throwing them all over this room. Uh, <laughs> it's it's super fucking funny. And then, uh, you know, the other troopers are like, set to stun. And Gideon's like, eh, 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 chill the fuck out. The kid's getting tired. I want to and, see uh, where this goes. <laughs> exactly. And I love that he just incites this chaos. Like, he's fucking mm. loving the shit out of this. What I thought was happening here was that, like, he was, like, trying to push Grogu to, like, mm. murder these stormtroopers. Like, come on. Ooh, Let's I, see what you can yeah. do. Well, okay. I thought it was just to see what he was capable of, sort okay. of thing. Like, I thought he was trying to coax him into, like, murdering a couple of his men. Like, oh, let's see what you're capable of, little Is, guy. is that not some Vader-ass shit? Is that not some Vader it's almost, that's shit? A, that's some Palpatine type shit. Yeah, like that's some like dark, dark shit. Like, and I, I think they're doing this on – like they want you to understand that Gideon is not to be fucking fucked with. Like this man is the <laughs> real deal Holyfield. Like chill the fuck out. All I know right, this sure. is a TV show, but there is serious shit going on right now. This next part, why do you have to flex on Baby Yoda like that? Man, you know? crazy. He, you know, Grogu collapses and – He's panting and stuff. He's like, <sighs> and Gideon says, you've gotten good with that, but it makes you oh so sleepy. It's and so like, fine. Oh, dude, that's on him, bro. I didn't know that I needed Moff Gideon and Grogu interacting, but I did. I, I didn't know I needed it either, but I loved every second of this of, of this entire scene. Oh, yeah. it, it was getting to end, it was, it was great. Oh, hey, you're a sleepy little boy. Let me pull on my fucking epic lightsaber. Just, he goes, and shine it in your eye. <laughs> and she's his dark saber, you know, and he, uh, he he asks Grogu if he's ever seen one in all his years, and Grogu reaches for it, and Gideon taunts him. He's like, ah, 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 you're not ready to play with one of these. He has <laughs> and, uh, plans, bro. Th- that sentence means that he has a lot of plans with Baby Yoda. Like, yeah. Grogu, he's got ideas. He's got ideas. And he, uh, he says, it's time for a nap. And the uh, troopers stun and lock up our baby boy. And uh, you just, bro, you just skipped. immediately like stood up, bro. I, mean, I thought they were gonna end him right there. Oh, legitimately, I did not think of the like the stun kind of mm-hmm. last mode. I guess we want to call it. I thought they were just gonna be like long nap, as in like you're sleeping forever now. <laughs> also, though, Colton, you skipped over something that Moff Gideon said about the saber. Whenever he put it away, he said, "No, no, you can't play with this yet." And then he said. You're liable to poke an eye out with it. Oh, yeah. Calling back to <laughs> episode four. <laughs> He's an orange. With, with He's Luke. Orange. Yeah. Man. But, you know, he instructs yeah. his officer here to send a message to Pershing, letting him know that they have their donor. The fucking doctor, man. He seems so nice, but now he's a fucking... Well, he's a no. mad scientist, bro. See, I feel like he's like he's a he's a good bad guy. Because like he's know. still a bad guy, but he's at least good. I don't know. Like, I don't like it. Like, I, he doesn't. I don't like the fact what he's doing, but he's at least trying to keep Baby no, Yoda alive while he's also still spineless. Like he's willing to say whatever it is to keep his life to Mando. Oh, I wasn't going to kill him. I swear. Well, but he, he actually wasn't trying dies. to kill him. If he dies, he dies, and then <laughs> this he's just going to be like. He's gonna be like, yeah, fuck it. If he dies, he dies. You know, like, what the fuck is your deal, man? Do you want to kill no, what's this? What's your, what's your, what's your fucking problem, guy? Maybe he uh, wanted to eat him. <laughs> the episode ends on a, a lingering shot of a sleeping shackled Grogu. And it's also, just... those little baby shackles were cute. <laughs> yeah, I want them for like my collection. Like, I want. I just want uh, that tiny video. little pair of shackles. shackles, dude. They're probably just like. Uh, you lock well, your fingers totally up. Gonna be a, there's totally yeah. going to be a Grogu and shackles action figure and pop figure. I would get that. Oh, fuck yeah, absolutely. Dude, it's Disney. Are you kidding me? They're the most money-grubbing motherfuckers ever, and I can't <laughs> wait to work for them someday. So if you're with <laughs> you, I'm not with Miles, and I do not support the arson that is what, that's going to take place. So don't take it out on me. Hey, See? Listen, they can, they can afford having their studio burnt down. Ah! They'll, just build it, they'll just build it better back better than ever before. Yeah. That's a lot, man. You're burning a lot, and we're talking. I'm not about- burning down like I'm not talking about burning down like Disneyland. I'm just talking about just like their head all the kids burning down. Dude, the castle. Do you really want to wait any longer for future projects? Like I don't know if that's the move, man. I think we should take a. Hey, of- listen, listen. I said what my price is for me not to do this, and that is Den with his helmet off in front of baby. Give me that. Um, it's not do you need it by the end this of the is, show? No. This is Miles' list of demands. End of the series. It doesn't need to be by the end of the season. But if they if they like if it's the series finale 
and I haven't seen Din with his helmet off in front of Baby Yoda, they they bye should bye. know what's happening. They're no, listening they're right now. To the series finale. What if they take it to the series finale? That's then, the you know what? They take it to the series finale, and they get to keep their studio. If not, the FBI should have warned them. <laughs> Guys, I'm ready yeah. for chapter 15. I am too. <laughs> Dude. I'm ready for next week. We have two weeks. We have two weeks. I hate it, but I love it. Do you realize this? That we are going to... We have two more weeks to talk about The Mandalorian. Two. And then it's on to the next. Other things, which is still going to be fucking awesome. But like, but it's not The Mandalorian. That's all that I know this podcast has right now. And when I record with you oh, guys... It will expand. It will week. expand, my friend. Oh my god, it's nuts. There is another. There, there is another. <laughs> uh but this has been the Penny Bloom podcast. Twas I, Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, no. Anytime. Next week, even. Thank you, <laughs> Miles Buttress. And just, I'm just happy to be here. I'm, I'm happy that you are here. And thank you, KBZ Kyler Barnett. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, this has been the Penny Bloom Podcast. Peace, love, and bloom, and always praise Keanu Reeves.